Are we ready to start, guys? Sure. I'm ready to rock. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't be <laughs> We're going to call the meeting to order at 6.30. Um, obviously, we don't have a public forum. But we do have correspondence. Um, so one thing at a time, I guess. Can, let, can we take a look at the letter that we got from Joe Murkowski? Do we want to move that to new business? Well, I don't know of that or if we just want to discuss it now. What do you think? Don't invite me to discuss it now. Is that okay with everybody? Fine with me. Yes. Fine also, with Rose, me. also, Rose has got a, a guest. The Stephanie just joined. There's a guest. Okay. Did she did she want to be, before we get too much did she interested in public forum or is she just sitting in? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. Is it, Stephanie, are you there? Um, I don't, there's not a picture, it's just uh, Stephanie's iPad. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, it's, it's Stephanie Blaha? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, I was just listening in. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so this letter um, from Joe is requesting a um he's interested in putting up a monument that would mm -hmm. honor both those who have served in times of war and those who have served in the services in times of peace and those who are still in the services today and he was interested his, his idea kind of is a circle of flagpoles with um each military branch flag along with benches and landscaping um, so, what are your thoughts? I'll probably tell you my thoughts. Um, well, my questions would be, where would we have space to put the, what is it, five branches of military? Well, it would be a circle. Yeah, I don't know where, yes, I guess. So, you know, where we would have the space to make it large enough that you could put a bench or benches, um, that it would be, I mean, obviously if you're gonna make a memorial, you don't want it hidden. So like, where would we have space to put it? That it would be visited enough, seen and appreciated. And somewhere that we have on our books that we're willing to put more benches. Well, I, I, I just felt it went beyond benches. And my concern when, when Rick first told me this was that I like the idea. I think it's a great tribute um, to the people in our military. I'm a little leery, though, of opening the door and starting to put memorials into our park. We ran into this at Chaffinch. Remember we were saying how we put mm -hmm. so many of those memorial benches are starting to look like a memorial park and we're not in the memorial business, we're in the park and recreation business. So I don't know if that's a concern to other people <laughs> or if that's just the way I looked at it. Well, when I read I, it, the I, first thing that came to mind was, is there, because Gil, everywhere else is taking down that's monuments. So yeah. So, I mean, is Guilford, like, are we happy with our monument on the green? What does it represent? Are we kosher with that? Because if not, then do we switch it out to this? Which, and then what that would be our decision. Out? What would you be switching out? Taking this, because people have already oh, said sure. something on Facebook oh, about sure. taking oh, statues no. down. So oh, if that yeah. statue came down, you put the flagpoles up and it's on the Guilford green, and then that would be the green committee's choice. See, I had it, I hadn't really thought about that, but when I read the letter, even though it doesn't say something about the green, I read it as if it was proposed for the green and was thinking that's pretty big. Not that it's not inappropriate, because I think it's a like um, you know, a good idea and it's you know has good sentiments. You know, it, I think it's all very positive, but it just seems yes. when you put all those flagpoles, it just seems very big. So it would be very prominent and dominant, not that it should be hidden, like Claire said, but just kind of all in proportion. I was just trying to think of how that how that would go just with that design. I don't like, really think this is a parks kind of thing. I really, I don't think it's a parks and rec thing. I think it's more something that would be green centric than, than us. Yeah. I, I, I do kind of. Go ahead. 
I mean, I do kind of think that, that Claire brought it up, that there's a larger conversation going on about monuments and memorials and things like that, that it would be hard to make a quick decision about this, I think, yes, because absolutely. there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, discussion going forward um, about these ideas. And so I think it's a landmine we don't want to get now. into. I really do. Well, I mean, the other thought I had immediately when I read it was, since it's representing the military, why are we not talking to, why, why isn't Joe and his troop not talking to the FW? Okay, Rick, do you want to chime in here on that? Sure, sure. so we, I, I checked with, um, with uh, Larry, uh, Jerry uh, Silber, the chair of the Green Committee. Um, they didn't, he didn't have a lot of support for putting it on the Green, because you know, there's so many monuments there now anyway. And I did talk, talk to Larry Santa Maria. There's actually a very similar um, mm -hmm. display at the VFW at already. Mill Pond. Right. It's, got the, it's got the flags, you know, right at, yeah, Mill Pond, right. You can see it from, you know, our, our parking area there. Um, similar, it's got benches. I think there might be like a little plaque of some sort and it's got the flags. You know, Larry suggested, um, you know, what about, uh, it's not as visible, but maybe something like Alderbrook Cemetery. Uh, you know, and uh, I did send that information back to Joe uh, Markowski and uh, I haven't heard back from him. Uh, I did let him know that that the Green Committee, um, that at least the chair of the Green Committee, didn't have a lot of uh, positive thoughts about it because, of, again, there's so many monuments on the Green now. I, I mean, I think everybody thinks it's a good idea, but but where, you know? And I kind of mm -hmm. agree. If you if we do it in a park, where does it go? What what do we open up to other op, you know other memorials and monuments? Wait, how park? do we de then deny other people who want to do memorials? Right. Lawrence, I see your hand. Yeah, um, cool. Rick, can we, can we steer him in a different direction? You know, kill two birds with one stone is, you know, just an example, like, you know, if we need a bridge in Bittner Park or whatever <laughs> in the trails, not just that, but other things, and then incorporate like a plaque there and say, this is it, this is to honor veterans, you know, past and present, and then you kill two birds with one stone, and now, we, you know, and then people that are using the bridge can see this plaque, and it, you know, it was put here in honor of, you know, of veterans past and present, you know, still two birds and one stone, like I said, as opposed to, you know, just a memorial like that. I, I did keep the door open if he had some other thoughts of some of a different type of project uh, that he might want to come to us with. Um, um, but, you know, it's up to you folks. I didn't invite him to the meeting or, you know, anything at this point, but you might want to discuss a little bit first. But um, I, I think, you know, again, I, I, I would have thought he or his troop would have known that there was already one at the, at the VFW kind of similar to what he's talking about. And that's, Larry kind of confirmed that. I knew there were the flags there and I, I think there's a stone or something, some, some uh, benches. It's very similar. So kind of there already is one in town. So, um, but yeah, to your idea, uh, Lawrence, I guess if something else he wants to do and, and he wants to present an idea and talk to you folks about memorializing the military people somehow with, you know, the military honorary bridge, <laughs> Have been there, you know, whatever the project might be, that's that's up to him, I guess. Yeah. All right. Anything else? So, we, so we're sort of agreed that we're not just going to give this the go ahead to go into the park. Correct. Correct. We... Okay. Um. Other. The other uh, correspondents were all in regard to the concert on the beach. And I think that is under new business, isn't it, Rick? It is, yeah. So shall we hang on to those and address that when we get to that? Sounds yes. good. Okay. Uh, which brings us to approval of the minutes. On June 1st, can we get a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, make I'll a make a motion. Go ahead, Lawrence. All right, make a motion to approve the uh, minutes of June 2020. Second. I'll second. That was Claire, Kathy. Who? Claire. Claire. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Aye. Um, I left. I left early that night, so I don't know if that means I need to abstain. Well, I think you were there for ninety-nine percent of it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The uh, the expenditures. Any questions on the expenditures? I have one, Rick. On page two, what is Gorilla Waste Services? Ah, now I have paper, right? 
No, it's a dumpster. This is a dumpster. Oh, it's a dumpster. Center. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just curious. And you knew that, Claire. I did because it was my, <laughs> it caught my eye at first because I was like, why are we paying for garbage? But then I realized it was probably a dumpster for something. Very good. Any other questions or comments on the, on our bills? Negative. Nope. Oh, pretty standard. Okay. Motion to accept the bills. I, Claire, will make a motion to accept the bills for June 2020. Second. I'll second it. Okay, Lars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Department reports. Rick. Just a, a couple of highlights on mine. If you have any questions. Um, uh, number three, the Jacobs Beach, you know, I guess I, I was mentioning just before we kind of started the meeting that um, um, I, I've been going there most weekends to see how things are going. I was there on, on July 4th uh, for a bit of time, and um, it was a good, good crowd. Uh, uh, the beach was shut down for a little while. I talked to the uh, attendants there and said that, you know, I think there was more room. So we, we opened back up, even though the parking lot was totally full, even the, the space that we created um, – uh, north of the picnic pavilion, that, yeah, there was thir that's 30 more spaces, and the whole thing was, and there wasn't even a picnic there. <laughs> it, the parking lot was full, but there was still room on the beach. And, um, you know, I always emphasize to the uh, staff there that it's not the cars in the lot that cause us to be full, it's what's on the beach. People can park at Chitton and then walk, um, and, you know, there might be 20 people kayaking with cars here. And, you know, Lawrence takes, I know I see how he parks, takes up four parking spaces with those kayaking <laughs> down there. <laughs> um, um, Rick, uh, when they, um, are, when we close the parking lot, because the parking lot's full and, and you're saying open it back up for people to come in and we're telling people to walk in, are we still checking beach passes? Because I'm just thinking future, we already had a problem with walk-ins. Um, so how are we? still collecting we, uh, we, we had um three i think actually when i was there i think there were four uh gate guards um two basically or you know collecting i mean there's a line of cars so you need two people definitely right. but we need another one to go get them you know make sure people walking in from chitin who don't come through the gate they're you know coming that far into the parking lot they go there and make sure that they have a pass or they pay to get in or checking you know, it's, a, it's a user fee not a parking fee right right um but overall, you know, it was, I, no complaints. I went there again yesterday, really, really to go kayaking with my son, actually. And I wasn't really, I mean, I stopped, I talked to them, you know, for a little bit and I asked for any problems, any issues. And, you know, the only complaint they get is really is that, you know, why do we let non-residents in? And we have to, we don't have a choice on that. But um, they uh, sold a hundred beach passes yesterday. Wow. wow. Uh, I, Ellen checked for me uh, to date at the beach um we've uh, sold about fifty thousand dollars worth of passes uh, and about ten thousand through the office or, or online so uh, we're at about sixty thousand our budget is, is 75 so um but that's that's also crossing over two fiscal years so i don't know you know how we ended uh, right. june 30th you know i don't i don't i didn't look at that but uh it's been busy it really has been busy um people are, are uh, you know doing the appropriate things as far as distancing themselves and um it's been good. Um, okay, um, and, 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 and Rick, that's, you know, you know, pat yourself on the back. I mean, that's because, you know, the way you, you guys have the beach looking. I mean, it's an attractive place to go to. I mean, that's why people are going there. And the staff are great. You know, these young uh, gay guards and so on are very, very courteous to people. Um, sometimes yep. they get a bit of a tongue lashing sometimes, which is not mm -hmm. fair to them. But um, they're, 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 they're doing a good job. They really are. Um, how did things go at Quantabog? I went up Saturday and it was pretty good. So we staffed it last weekend, the right. weekend before, and this weekend we had staff there basically to let people know it's not open. So we didn't have the issue of, you know, people walking around the fence, getting on mm. the beach. Actually, um, it And I, I was up there Saturday, uh, I don't know what time. I was actually going uh, north to uh, East Hartford and, um, there was nobody there, nobody on the beach. I mean, we had staff there, but not nobody Sunday. on the grassy area, nobody in the parking area. Sunday at about 6.30, I was coming home and um, there were three nice young ladies who were just getting out of the water and leaving. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, they, uh, they, 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 were go, the start, they were going around the fence and we're heading back to the car, which is parked in front of our chain. Well, st staff were there nine to six. So they, yeah, they we can't be there out. all the time. Yeah. You know, we're trying to get the, the, the police have been helpful for us. Um, you know, the idea was I was hoping to have a police officer station there. They weren't able to do that. So we have our staff and if there's an issue, our staff will call them, you know, but um, there hasn't been an issue other than people complaining it's not open. Well, um, and if we didn't have an issue last weekend, I think we're probably not going to have big issues. Right. Um, so let's see, the other thing I just want to point out is um, we, we all staff are in now. I, I brought everybody in as of uh, June 15th, so we're fully staffed in the office. Um, and uh, it's my understanding we're the only department it is. Uh, I thought Matt, I thought there were other departments going to start bringing people. Well, I'm sorry, we're not the only one. Social services, public works. Um, but at Town Hall, they're not fully staffed yet. They're still, I think, working at 50%. But um, I talked to Matt about it and Mitch, and I said, look, we got camps, we got beaches, um, we still got all the, uh, you know, the, the shopping we're doing, and I'd like to have everybody in. They said, okay. And uh, again, everybody has their own space. There's plenty of room. Uh, yeah. Anytime we leave our desk, we put a mask on. So I think it's been safe, and, you know, we're, we're doing um, what we have to do. We're open. All right. Okay. That's it. I'm on for it. Anything else on Rick's report? Yeah, what's the, uh, the number one, the... Best pit showed problems with organic soils. Yeah, well, we have that under um, old business. Um, oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, okay, Anthony's report. It seems like a lot's getting done, but we are working on the fields now, right? We are. Um, okay. And uh, part of the, uh, I was going to, I guess, I think I'm addressing this under new business, but the whole reopen Connecticut, there's a whole bunch of rules and regulations. And, um, well, as part of that, I suggested to Tony that let's, let's remove the bleachers because technically, if anybody sits on the bleachers, Little League or soccer, whoever's using them, they're responsible to disinfect them after every game. <laughs> and uh, who's going to ensure that that happens? <laughs> you know, Where so, are we going to put all these bleachers when we remove them? Well, we just, we, we, like at Adams, for example, they're, they're aluminum bleachers. We just moved them against uh, a fence oh. and turn them, turn them oh, upside okay. down. I mean, we're not there. literally moving them somewhere. No, no on, on site. Not off base. Okay, that's what I meant. They're on site. Okay. On site, but away from the field and turn them around or upside down or something. Fair enough. Um, but, you know, it's to help out. Cause no, you know, I, I, I know the Little League or soccer or lacrosse really want to go and disaffect every bleacher. No. <laughs> so we did that to try to help. And the other thing Tony did is um, part of the regulation is that, that even spectators have to still sit six feet apart, if you like a you know, lacrosse game or a Little League game right. or whatever. So he painted squares, measured them out all around the fields. At, um, I think he said in his report, 216, yeah, 216 grids he made. It <laughs> took a long time, um, but it's all what we're trying to do to help these sports groups be able to do, you know, start the sports up again and do it in a safe way. Uh, to have the spectators be separated like they're supposed to. Good idea. They've been very busy. Okay. Okay, Ellen. Winterberry. I have a question. What's Winterberry? Winterberry is oh, an irrigation contractor. Oh, okay. Is that on Tony's report? I think I read it just... Okay. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, for irrigation. Yeah, they, they're, they should be capitalized. Winterberry is our, our irrigation company. Okay. I thought he was talking to the plants. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. <laughs> you never do know. <laughs> Part of the landscaping. <laughs> okay, recreation supervisor. They've been busy. Camp, camp is going well. Uh, we're in our third week this week. Um, um, I forgot the chip of the numbers are this week, but I think it's over 30, but we were, had 32 last session, uh, 22 the first week. Um, or 26 and then 32 and I think it's going up that's I kind of Ellen and I expected that would probably happen once we started it yeah um, people saw that it's very very safe and I don't know if you saw the uh, courier but Megan Wallace was they did the, a great uh, article on Megan she, yeah it was mm -hmm. good she did a nice yeah. job um, it was it was good for her because she's done so well with it done a great job with the camp good publicity for the camp I think too really? and, I mean it's clearly a much different camp you know it's not 
really like Minocatuck. It's at the high school, but Cliff Gurnham and Joel Reven were great meeting with Ellen and Taryn up there to uh, show them what rooms were available. They're, they're all in a, like a pod, one section. They got the, the, the two big gyms and the wrestling room and the fields, and it's working out great. Um, and they've been doing, uh, you, you're familiar with this thing called TikTok? It's kind of like, <laughs> you know what that is, like, there. Yep. Yeah. Um, so they've been, it's, it's like a little video they've been doing with the staff and putting that up online. So it's, it's helping promote, you know, the camp. And they're putting it up every week, you know, some of these little videos. Um, so that, that's going good. We're very, very pleased with it. Um, I mean, it's, pretty, it's a good chance we may lose money on the camp this year, but we decided to go with it because we yeah. thought it was an important service for mm -hmm. people who are working and need a place for their kids. Um, greatly reduced staff, you know, far less than we know we have. But we used to staff for 120 kids, and we got 30. We yeah. can, mm -hmm. by state law, we can go up to 50. That's the max. So we can go that, that high Thanks. if we get enough to register. So um, kudos to Alan and Karen and uh, the staff for pulling that off. It's a totally different thing. The staff have to wear masks all the time. Oh, bless their hearts. Constantly cleaning, you know, supplies. And uh, the um, custodians have been really good in the community, in the um, school there, you know, disinfecting bathrooms and tables and desks, whatever the kids are using. It, it's been a great, great effort, and it's working well. And there are not, a, if you saw the article, there are not a lot of towns have uh, opted to run a camp this summer. They just signed yeah. too much work, and they did it. And we did. So um, we're, uh, we're thankful it's going well. I think attendance will rise as things go well. Yeah. Um, the I'm last thing we the, 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 uh, just came out with a modified summer brochure that uh, the, the mm -hmm. uh, Connor, Taryn, and Ellen put together. We have a lot of little pop-up programs, like one day thing where or a couple hours, you go to Jacob's Beach or you get rocks, collect rocks, bring them home, paint them. Um, uh, I think they have a paint day or a paint uh, activity for, for kids, uh, I think at Chaffage, I believe. Um, they have uh, shells, you know, collect shells and paint them. So uh, a sandcastle building contest we're gonna do at Jacob's. So they're doing a lot of little sort of mini programs to try to get something going. Um, in the drive-in movie we have coming up, um, Thursday, Friday, I think it's the 23rd, I believe is the date, or 24th maybe, 24th, Friday the 24th at St. George Church, and it's going to be Aladdin, is uh, what they're planning on showing there. So they're, um, they're busy trying some new things, you know, our usual Parks and Rec things aren't happening, and so they're trying some different stuff, and, um, you know, I think we're finding that people are starting to respond to these things. To their credit, they're at least providing something for people to do, and I think it's great. Mm -hmm. yep. it, it, it is. And I know they're working hard trying to figure out things that are safe yet fun. Mm -hmm. So, and that's tough. All right. Uh, seniors report. I've got a question, Rick. Am I reading this right? That now we have taken over um, all of the administrative uh, administrative duties for um, buying the uh, groceries for the seniors or, or whoever needs help? We, we are. It is slowing down a little bit. Um, well, we did a lot of the administrative of it anyway. It was really Dennis did more of the coordination of the volunteers. Right. Uh, so that's one thing we're doing differently. He, he, Dennis uh, has kind of pulled out, you know, he spent 40, 45 hours a yeah. week as a volunteer. Oh, exactly. And, you know, phenomenal job. And he just... So we're you know, able to, to absorb that work though? That's my question. Right now, because we're not doing any other senior programs right now. You know, okay. and, and the bus rides are, are, the only busing we're doing is for uh, medical rides, which is picked back up because, you know, for a while there, no doctor's offices were even open. Uh, so we have very little uh, uh, bus transportation, but that's picked back up now. Um, um, so other than that, though, you know, we're not doing lunch. We're not, you know, people aren't calling for meals or sill or anything okay. else. So right now, the staff can do it, uh, handling it. We um, we stopped doing Wednesdays, so that's one day not to do it. That uh, Terry and Patty can catch up with some other things. Good. But if you see that over a thousand uh, trips, yes. eighty-four thousand five hundred dollars, one hundred eighty-seven different people. Um, yeah. So at some point, you know, we're gonna have to. As things open up more with the governor, I think, and you know, seniors feel more comfortable going out. You know, we we'll start cutting back. Start to but pull back on it a little bit. 
Yeah, it's a little less now than it was during the, the uh, peak anyway. Um, I think I talked to Terry last week. Or have we lost some bus drivers? Are we not up to? I got that under new business, but um. Oh, okay. Then we'll wait till the business. Okay. Catching over three hour drivers. Okay, we'll wait till the business. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on the seniors program? Okay, nope. and building maintenance. Anything new? No, mostly. Just a couple of things I'll highlight is uh, we did end up uh, ordering Cove base for the Whitfield room. We've been in the right. Guilford Whitfield room. Um, that's the, like the molding that goes around, you know, the between the floor and the wall. And one when, when we took it off, it, we were holding on to it, but it's in bad shape. You know, a lot of it kind of ripped when they took it off. And I, I, I wanted to wait until about the second of last week of June to see how our budget was. So we're not taking this out of the program account. This is in the budget. We're taking it out of it. It's about five thousand dollars, and we looked like we were in pretty good shape. So, um, and I confirmed that with Mary Jane, and so we uh, decided to go ahead and order it. Um, it's going to take about six weeks or so to get it, and then um, Todd and staff will put it in. You know, the, the cost did not include the installation; it's just the, the material. Um, but we got that, and the lead room floor is looking absolutely spectacular. It's so shiny right now, um, and, it, and only two coats of seal are on it. They're going to still put two coats of uh, finish, um, which we just got last week. Next week, or this week, the guys are putting that in. But it looks really, really nice. Very, very shiny. Yes, my concern, Rick, is still this chimney. I, mm -hmm. So what we're doing with that is um, uh, I've talked to Glenn Gunderson, you know, a local chin, uh, roofer guy. Right. We think we, he and... Steve Nyor think that part of the issue is the flashing around the chimney. The water's getting in through there somehow. Um, that's a pretty easy fix and not a high expense, high cost. But if we want to repoint or seal the chimney, we're talking more like ten to twenty thousand dollars. And so we knew there's no way we could do that now. We don't have the budget for it. Um, and and let's let's see how if we think it's most of it's coming in through the roof, uh, uh, through the flashing. Let's try that first. Get that done. But I want to close up that quantified room wall. It's wide open right now. We're just, right. you know, the spud showing. And we didn't want to close it until we knew that um, this at least temporary fix was going to work uh, before we start putting a lot of money there. So that's the plan. Um, I just got to get Glenn. If I can't get him, I'll get another roofer to come and just fix it. I will, I will tell you that I did get a call this weekend from Joan Stepbacker who had a similar problem at her house, and she said that Gunderson was absolutely fabulous at fixing this sort of problem. So I assured her that we have good people working on it. Yeah, he's good, Glenn's good. So. He goes on the roof and he says, I think like water. If I was water, where would I go? <laughs> where would I go? Well, let's hope that's the problem. Okay. Yeah. Has it been inspected to make sure that there's no mold in the wall in any of the rooms that the chimney's connected to? There was a little bit there uh, on the uh, sheetrock inside the wall there, and um, Todd's been running dehumidifiers up there for about over a month now to just you know get it everything dried out, uh, and then there's a product we can put on it to kill the mold. Okay. Once it's dried out, Todd's going to do that. All right, that's important to do. Thanks, yeah. Claire, for reminding us. Yeah. All right. Anything else on on reports? Are we good? Good. Good. Okay. Commission report. Standing fields. Um, so the, we had a, a meeting uh, a week or so ago, I think. And um, the main issues uh, they're talking about is the, uh, the high school stadium and track. <clears throat> I've been on uh, Zoom meetings with um, Cliff Gurnham, Paul Schmidt, mm. and um, the uh, architect who's doing the work. Um, the timetable is to uh, have all the specs ready in the fall, go out to bid late fall, and this will be a project. This is play, paid for under the Board of Ed budget, by the way, not ours uh, this time around. But um, to uh, have the project be done around this time next year. But, so they're working on all the specs for that. And um, that's kind of the main thing. Um, let's see, what else? We talked about the, all the sports starting this last week. Um, oh. They also recommended at the, they're, they're making a new parking lot and you know behind the so-called portable classrooms at at adams yes and, uh between the classroom and the soccer field right they're, they're building a parking lot there um 
the field committee is recommending that a, a net should go up because that, those cars will be close to that little league. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of possible smashed windows there. <laughs> and um, it's the opinion that it's something that should be part of the board of ed. They're putting up this parking lot. It should be them putting up the net. So Cliff was not opposed to that, but he said, you got to see in phase two uh, of this building the park a lot, what he's got for money, and then try to put it in there. And why are they expanding the parking lot? For, for the sports or for the Adams? For the parents? school. For, for the, the school. school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Green Committee. Anything we need to know? Uh, no report. Land acquisition. Nothing to report. <laughs> Except Dennis forgot to show up. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Didn't miss much. You remembered the next morning. I'm sorry. Um, splash pad. Anything happening? Um, we are talking about getting our fundraising back out there. Great. And how we're going to do that and what that's going to look like. Okay. Um, how much more do we need to raise? Um, that I do not know right now. Okay. Okay, unfinished business. Uh, the ADA at Chaffinch. Uh, it's approved and we're just ready to go. We just have to have our guys find time to put find it in. Time. We have all the approvals. I mean, it wouldn't have been a good time, would have been about March, but we didn't have all the approvals by then, and, and now we're busy. So, um, whenever to Tony gets some free time, he'll, he'll start doing it. Okay. All right, how about the boiler replacement? That's pretty well close to being done. Almost done, yep. We got a little more fine tuning to do, but uh, all this new stuff is in there. And um, there are a couple of uh, tweaks they got to do. And I think, I think you know, by the end of this week or next week, hopefully it'll be done. Wow, good. Okay. Disc golf, are we expanding or are we waiting? It's on hold for now until, um, um, you know, I mean, there's nothing more we can do until we, winter time. If he wants to do some more clearing and whatever, we, we can't get back out there until December or January. Okay. I think he does want to try to do a tournament, though, in the fall. Um, and based on current guidelines, he probably could, um, you know, on the existing course, not the new course. But I, I've told him he's going to have to do some fundraising with tournaments because, um, you know, unless we want to go back out and get sponsors again. Uh, you know, we're going to yeah. have to come up with some money to pay for new baskets and tea pads. Okay. Uh, the Peddlers ordinance, have we found out anything more about that? or? Did... No. I haven't clearly heard anything. Nope, I haven't heard anything. No responses from anything. Uh, you know, I think, the, the. I mean, what's been happening, I think so far it's been pretty good. Um, when I was there yesterday, we, of course, we have the lemonade guy uh, on the, you know, on the boardwalk area platform. Um, hot dog guy's been down there just about every day. Um, and the, the lemonade is separate because he's not in the parking lot. And actually, technically, the hot dog guy isn't either. He's kind of right on the edge of the grass, but right there pretty much. But there was an ice, ice cream guy came in yesterday when I was there. And, I mean, it, that was okay. It was two different vendors that were parking lot vendors. We, we've always kind of considered the lemonade guy, I think, I think haven't yes, we? Not, uh, he's right. not under the, the parking lot rules. Okay. Um, I think the only thing Matt suggested that if, you know, at some point we might want to uh, have our own procedure about how do we handle the non-parking lot, you know, uh, on the boardwalk. Okay, you know, certainly. I think certainly. we all talked about sort of grandfathering lemonade in because he did it last year. We all felt comfortable right. having him do it, and local business and all that. Um, but um, Yeah, we talked about that last month because I that was one of my concerns, so. Yeah. We said that we were going to grandfather him in this year, but we needed to to look at making our own rules because it could get out of hand next year. So, hey, Rick, can you put that someplace in big letters and we'll start to look at that in the fall? Because that's when we should look at how it went for the summer and then start to plan on next summer. Okay. Because I know I'm going to write it down, but I forget. Well, we'll keep it on the agenda so we don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay. Is there, is there any limit to the ones that, I mean, you, Rick, you've talked to Matt, and I think, Claire, you've tried to talk to him. Is there any limit on the number that can be out on the green? Or is there no limit, or can these people park anywhere? I mean, what, what's, what is the procedure? Do we know? 
I don't I, think there is a limit. I think they can only park on Broad Street, so whatever number can fit there. I, I've seen as many as three. I think that's yeah, I saw three the other day. I was kind of surprised to see three trucks yeah. parked there. But, okay. I believe that's the only place the police department lets them park. Ah. Uh, I have seen a hot dog cart in other years down almost by the bank on uh, mm -hmm. Park Street, down, right. you know, sort of down that end across from the right, church. Down that end, so. Okay. I was just curious. <clears throat> All right. So they, as far as we know, have the uh, selectmen talked about the regulations and ordinances for the parking lots? Still, I haven't heard anything on that one yet. That, you know, that's the whole issue with the tents at uh, 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 Quantapod, which hasn't been an issue this year, of course, but... Um, all right. I, I, I don't know if they, they I, don't, I haven't heard they've been acted on it. Okay. All right, which brings us to the pickleball tennis courts at Adams. All so, right. <laughs> go ahead, Rick, you could tell them. There's a nice map in your folder, though. You may want yeah, to take that out. At, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me get that one out. Um, so here, here's the issue. We have all the approvals to um, rebuild the tennis courts and build four pickleball courts at Adams. However, we had test pits done and uh, Mike Ott, our engineer, was there and he got a geotechnical engineer to look at what we were looking at. They dug down about 10 feet and uh, I, I think around four or five feet down there was a layer of uh, organic material that was maybe, I don't know, 18 inches, two feet thick. The concern they have is the, the way, uh, concrete is very heavy, evidently, and dense, and the weight of the concrete um, pickleball courts would compress that spongy layer, and over time, it would, it would settle it or sink. Um, and so, you know, then Mike started, um, um, hang on a second, Suzanne just asking to come back in. I guess she got out for a minute. There she is. <laughs> Suzanne, you with us? I see her. I see her name. Um, uh, so the, the, there are ways to deal with it, but it's very, very, very expensive. I just got some estimates today from from Mike Ott. What would have one one option is they'd have to dig out and dig out all that spongy layer, um, take it out of there, um, and bring back uh, different fill. The other one is to drive piles, you know, those giant telephone poles, basically like drive them down into the ground to set the concrete courts on top of that. He said both of those options will add over $100,000 to the yeah. project. So pretty much not likely <laughs> it can happen. Um, when planning and zoning had asked, you know, is there any other place to put this? Um, I mean, the only place I thought was maybe been there, but I didn't think there's any way we could because I thought it was all ledge up there. So Rose, you were up there with us. Uh, we might I came up there with you. Um, and then we had test bids done last week at Public Works. If you look, can you look at pull out the um, this little map thing here? You should have that in your packet. Mike thinks we can build four standalone pickleball courts just north of the basketball court. There, um, you see the orientation of it. Um, and Rose, when you were up there with us, I don't know how, remember initially he had us going like way into the woods, but he re-looked at it and re-measured it. And um, that up that right corner there, uh, the farthest away from the basketball court, you can see that, that does go a little bit into the woods. There's a bank there, so there was some fill would have to be brought in to, you know, fill it up and level it. But Kevin McGee met with us up there too, because I wanted to get his input from environmental issues. We have to take trees down. Or, um, Kevin was fine with it. You know, it's really mostly small trees, nothing real big. Um, it would impact uh, a trail that's there that could get moved. It does not impact the disc golf course. I mean, even that, you can move a basket, it's not a big deal, but it doesn't. Um, we think it's well far enough from the wetlands. We measured it. It looks like it's about 113 feet away from the wetlands. If, if we're under 100 feet, we have to get wetlands approval. But Kevin thought that if it had to go to wetlands, he thinks they'd be more supportive of this than they were of it at Adams, and they approved that. Because Adams, it was 30 feet away from the wetlands there. This is 100 feet away, you know, maybe more. So um, so how do we pay for this? Because it's going to cost more to do this. We'll have to bring in fill and everything, right? It costs more than if we didn't have the problem at Adams, you know, what we originally thought the budget was. So what the proposal is, and Mike is recommending, is that when we redo the tennis course at Adams, 
redo them with asphalt, not concrete, because the concrete is a lot more expensive. And here's the rationale for that. Those tennis courts are sitting on the same material that the pickleball courts would have been sitting on. Same thing with compressing, you know, the, um, the same issue. It's going to settle down possibly. Um, he's saying, well, well let's do asphalt. I mean, those courts have been there 40 years. You know, yeah, granted they cracked and we had to fix them over time, but people are still using asphalt everywhere. Just, I was suggesting the post tension concrete because we, we knew how well that worked up at, um, at Binder for the skate park. We know it's like 20 years before we have to even ever worry about a crack. Um, but it doesn't, it's not realistic at Adams to do that. Asphalt less expensive. I don't have, Mike was not able to, uh, I tried to ask him to try for our meeting tonight if he could get me a cost comparison. He didn't have it. Um, but he did say that asphalt is, is considerably less expensive than concrete. So it'll cost less to do the tennis courts than what we figured at Adams um, to do the pickleball courts in concrete at, at Binder. Um, probably is going to cost a lot, all that much more than what we had figured at Adams, just some grading and fill. And the fill is, the town has plenty of full fill. Just paying somebody to, Maybe public works would haul it there for us, but just getting somebody to, you know, grade it, compact it, and all that kind of stuff that we have to do. Um, so we, we won't know the cost until we go out to bid. And uh, I suggested to Mike, well, why don't we bid out based on what you guys want to do tonight? But I, my suggestion is, well, let's go ahead and bid out the tennis court right now. You got the approvals. Let's do it. Get that done. Um, and then we wouldn't be able to do the pickleball course if we decided to do them at bid there until – probably September anyway, because I was told that the next planning and zoning meeting after July, which were too late for the July one anyway, is until August 19th. We only have one meeting in August. So we can't get those approvals until then anyway. So I'm suggesting, well, let's, let's get the Adams done anyway. Let's get the tennis court done. And then we can, uh, then we'll know how much money we have available that we put into the pickleball courts um, if, if the cost is more up at uh, Bender. Um, and do it as two two separate projects. It, it, Pam Millman, in a little conversation with her, she, her suggestion was maybe we get better price if it's all one project, two different locations. But what I said to her, yeah, but it's it's two different processes. One is concrete, one is asphalt. Not everybody does both of those things. So I, I think it's and they're so far separated, distance wise. It's not a mobilization issue, uh, and they're separated day wise, you know, months months apart. So. I don't know. My recommendation is we, we, we do it separately. Do Adams now. Get it out to bid ASAP if this is what you guys want to do. Uh, get out to bid and have that done uh, this summer and be ready to play on by uh, maybe late August. Larry? Yeah, have, yeah, Chris, if we could back up. So as far as the pickleball courts go at Adams, I mean, this gentleman was Zoom, uh, gave us a Zoom meeting that wrote, wrote up all these plans and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. Now, I'm just money, money, quarterback back there. Why weren't those, you know, like how far do they dig down as far as the organic to find, like how far do they go down to their organic soil? They went about down about 10 feet. I think about four, four, five, or six feet down, they found the organic soil. How do they go, how do they dig down that far? What do they use? Uh, public Works had a backhoe. Public Works. They literally bring a backhoe and, and dig 20. So, so my question is like, and I, and I don't know, I'm just asking. Why wasn't that done before this gentleman drew up all these plans and everything? Because those, well, those, those, those plans must have those plans must have cost us money to have him drop those plans, right? And now we can't use them. Well, well, we can't. We, we can still use the tennis court. You know, whatever he's done with the tennis court, we're still going to use that part anyway. The pickleball, I mean, it's still the same plan, just a different location. So there's not a lot difference. Other than he'll have to do something, uh, you know, like the grading plan, that'll be a little different. So, so we, we wouldn't be paying for, like, we pay for, uh, we would, we would not be paying for, paying for new plans, to draw up new plans. Well, Rose, we met with him. I, I suggested that, that, I mean, this guy's been unbelievable. He's given us way more than we've ever paid him for anyway. Yeah. I, I suggested that, you know, we, we shouldn't take advantage of him. I, I said, you know, you probably should give us a proposal for some additional costs to do this. His cost, I, I, I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, Lawrence, but it wasn't a lot. I mean, it was, okay. it was, he's on an on-call list for town uh, engineers, um, for, for the town to 
call on for engineering services. He's, he's on this list, so we didn't have to go out to bid or anything. But yeah. his numbers are, are very, very good. I mean, the Adams Irrigation Project, he probably did about 10 more meetings than he was ever, uh, you know, said he was going to charge us for it. Okay, okay, fair enough. Now, Rick, so again, I'm asking, why wasn't those, why wasn't those, that 10 foot ditch done before we did anything? So they were done, well, it's a valid question, Lawrence. They were done um, around the time we went to plenty and zoning. We didn't have the results yet, though, at that point. So Mike and I talked about, so let, why don't we go ahead with plenty and zoning? Let's get it approved. We find out these pet test bits are okay. they are ready to go, you know, rather than wait, wait, wait and, um, for plenty and zoning to approve it. Um, oh, so yeah, it's not, in other words, you dig a hole, you have to dig a hole, you take the soil, and then you, well, you send the soil out and you get tested, and, and the test doesn't. It takes a while for the test to come back, I take it? Well, pretty much. Not exactly that way, but he had to get a... Uh, uh, so once we dug it, he then got a, um, a geotechnical guy to come in. He came and looked at it. But then, then they went and talked to a structural engineer. That took probably about two weeks to get back from that. Okay. That took time. And we didn't want to hold up the project with got it. Okay. approvals. So let's get it approved. Assuming we can do it. Then we found out, uh-oh, guess what? Um, I mean, Mike's a good engineer. He's really, really good. He could have just said, "Hey, let's just build them here." You know, they'll last for a while, and yeah, they sink. They sink. But he, he said, "Let's." And I, we agreed. We got to do this right. We don't want to have something we build now. Five years from now, we find the thing sinking, and it's like, why do we do this? Oh, yeah, but you better find out now than later. And one last yeah. question. So my, my question about be bringing the um, having pickleball courts up at Bittner. My question is, are people going to want to? You know, people that play pickleball, are they going to want to drive up to Bittner to play? I mean, do you see any problem with that? With like, those, I mean, I'm thinking, well, if the, if the pickleball courts that are at Adams are kind of like downtown, people go downtown a lot, that they're more apt to go if they play at Adams. Or, you know, now it's going to be a, if it's Bittner, are they still going to get used a lot? Will people travel up there to use them before we go ahead and put them up there? I have the same concern as Lawrence. Not of whether they'll use them or not, but the accessibility for s some of the folks that are using them. Because I don't go to the skate park or basketball up or the disc golf much, um, but I can never remember. Is it paved going up the hill? Yes. I yes. know the parking. Okay. I'm just more, or, you know, like making sure it was easy enough to get up yes. to them. I know the pickleball was held there on the basketball course right. for a while, but. Um, I just didn't know if it was it's, it's still a, a spot that people. Pre oh, okay. Yeah, my, my gut, my gut, my gut feeling is that people will travel up there because it is, it is popular. I think. The day the day we went up there, it was not the coolest of days, and there were two groups playing pickleball. So 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 the so gut, so, absolutely so, using this. Rick, what's your feeling? Will people go up there? You well, well, I see Stephanie's on, on with us. She she runs our pickleball program. Okay. Her. Sure. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi. Hi. Yeah, I I would say uh, they will. The pickleball players will go anywhere to play. So I, you know, it's a little more challenging, obviously, to get up and back there. But I I think they will go. It's not it's not a distance thing either. Um, it's not that far up Route 77. So I don't think that's an issue. I think they will go and play wherever they can play. What question answered? You know, Rick, if we're going to be doing um, all this work and all the stuff up there, then we probably should also look at sort of re maybe repaving the road that goes up there, make it an easier walk. We could do that. And, and actually, speaking of paving, Mike, Mike is still suggesting that at Adams, uh, the plan was to move those tennis courts 18 feet south so that we could expand up there if we want to. Yeah. He's still suggesting we do that because if you have. Um, I, I'm a, I mean, it's tennis, but it'll still be pickleball courts at Adams. We'll still have the four that we have. Right. If you have 16 people there, I don't think you can get 16 cars in that parking lot right now. So he, he's suggesting that why don't we stay with that plan? So to your point, Lawrence, we're still using his plan there. Nothing changes that way. Yeah. Uh, move it south. We don't have the money to pay it. You just put some stone in for now. It's like a gravel parking lot. Very low cost. Um, and we have, and that, and that takes care there. of the concerns that people have with parking on the grass. I think it's important that we do that. Yeah. So right. I, 
I guess we're looking for what, what do you guys want to do? So what do we need? Do we need a, a motion to go ahead with the um, repair? We've already agreed to repair this, the tennis courts. So, I mean, what? We need yeah, a motion to approve to move it to Bittner. Well, I'm talking about the, the tennis courts first. Well, that's yeah, approved. The, the, the tennis that's courts. What I'm are saying. That's, that's, all that's, all the, that's all done. So we don't need, I mean, we don't need a, a motion to go out to bid. That's just going to happen. Hmm? Right? Sure. I think really it's just if you, if you agree to move the pickleball courts to, yeah. to go that direction to, to Bittner, I think that's probably what we need to have you guys approve or not. Okay. So that's what we need. I'll make a motion to move the proposed pickleball courts from Adams to Bittner Park. Somebody second it. I'll second. All right. Any more discussion on it? Just to, to let you all know, I mean, we did talk to the, some people who work there. They were really very helpful at showing us and explaining to us. Because when we started this, we were way back in the woods trying to figure out where we're going to put the court. So this is in a much easier way to do it. And um, we also, you see where that red line is that separates sort of the, uh, the white from the rest? We thought we could put a fence there to separate the um, state board yeah. people from the <laughs> courts. Rose, did you, Rose, did you take a vote? Not yet. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just explaining what we're doing. Okay. We didn't take a motion. We didn't have a motion yet. Yeah, you did. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Yeah, we did yes. have a motion. Any more discussion on this then? <laughs> so I want to explain about the fence that we also put up. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I guess we're good. All right. Aye. <laughs> Suzanne came in late to the eye. <laughs> That's all right. We got her. All right. So the, the concerts, fireworks, and drive-in movies. <laughs> Well, just to let you know, that at this point, they're, they're still on. We have not canceled them yet. Okay. Um, I guess we're still waiting for governor's guidance. Um, um, my understanding is the, the um, current limit for outdoor activities is up to 500 people. That, that would be a problem on the green, not a problem at the beach or for a driving movie. Um, and, you know, we, we just haven't canceled yet. We're just waiting because it, it changes kind of week to week, you know, so we're kind of holding out, hoping that we'll be able to do the concerts on the green. When's the our first one, concert? Sorry? When's the first concert? Uh, on the green, uh, July 26th. Okay. It's a uh, monkeys tribute um, to the monkeys. Um, to the monkeys. Okay, so that's a, that's a ways away. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, fire, fireworks are, for now, postponed till September uh I think it's the 12th, if that's a Saturday. It's the 11th or 12th. I think it's the 12th. The rain date would be the Sunday. Um, that date is good with the uh, fireworks company. <clears throat> it's good with the fire fairgrounds. Uh, they all know this could change two weeks before that. If things go the wrong direction and the governor doesn't allow, you know, big gatherings like that, then we don't have it. Um, so we're not like locked into a contract. And also with all the bands, with the concerts on the green, um, you know, the community center has been the rain site, and I've been telling them that if it rains, we got to cancel or postpone mm -hmm. to another day or something. But yeah, we can't put th we can't squeeze three hundred people into the community center, oh. uh, Guilford Road, like we on a normal year we could, but this year we can't do that. So um, they understand that. The, the hard thing though is going to be that sometimes we make that call about three o'clock in the afternoon, kind of look at the weather, you know, we we say all right, we're going inside, so we're going to have to take it. We're going to we, we, we told the Lord, it's only right this time around. It's, we're going to have to cancel by Friday. Okay. So. I'm sorry if I missed it, but did you say a date for fireworks? September so, 12th. I think it's September 12th. September 12th, okay. I missed yeah. that. Thank you. The, the other good thing is we can do it a lot earlier, too. You know, the, by then it's dark at 7.30. So we're not talking about a 9.30 show. It, everything could be a lot earlier. So... Oh. Um, Again, depending on what's going on, maybe we don't do the moon bounces and things like that. Um, you know, right. if, we won't if uh, things don't get better. Just do the fireworks. Yeah. In, maybe, in place, maybe of, maybe the, the place of the fairs. Yeah. So that's uh, all right. Okay. But I'll just updates. We'll let you know. We haven't canceled them yet, but uh, we're kind of holding out a little as long as we can. Okay. 
All right. Um, the corner part yeah. with Kimmy, I think we talked about that. Do we need to say yeah. anything more about it? We're good. Going back to the concerts. Yep. Um, has anything been said from, yep, our health director and board of selectmen about regards to more concerts on the beach or on the green since the first time around people? That's our, that's our first item in new business. Okay. Yeah. We're going right there. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other unfinished business before we head there? All right. So, Claire's question. <clears throat> All right, so I was there, Rose was there, I was think there. Laura said her family was there, and a lot of what was up on Facebook was not accurate. Um, what is accurate, there clearly were people who did not social distance. I mean, that's, that's a fact. And there's mostly, I say a group of 30 maybe or so people that were right in front of the band. Um, and, it, and many of them were in the same family. Um, it turns out they were really the family of the band members and they didn't have masks. They weren't separated out. Um, there were some pictures online and um, I had some pictures I, I took and, and you could see that I say in the 80% of the people, Rose, correct me if you think I'm wrong. I'd say more than 80% of the people were for social distance. They were separated in pockets of people like all over, you know, scattered all around on the grass, the beach. And I guess it doesn't matter, you know, 100% work. And um, so I, 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 uh, I sent Matt and Dennis Johnson an email that night after it because I thought, oh boy, this, this could blow up. I want to make sure they had a heads up, knew that there were people that were, you know, not appropriately distancing. Um, but let me step back, except if it wasn't for the virus, it was a fantastic night. When we've done concerts on the beach before, we've had 75 or 100 people max. We never had more than that. We had 250 people, which to me, number one was the band, they, they were a draw, but it also showed people were like dying to get out, to do something, you know, and looking forward to something happening. And they just, they just kept coming and coming and coming. Um, so if it wasn't for the virus, my wife and I were there, we were sitting there looking out, the, the, the band was here and Lemonade stand to the left and all the people on the beach. <laughs> I feel like we're in Aruba or something. <laughs> it just it was a wonderful scene. It really, really was, um, except for the virus. So I, I called Dennis and Matt. Uh, Dennis came over to my office the next day. Matt was on vacation, but he called in. So he was part of a conference, a call we had. Um, and so the suggestion is that Dennis said he can get us masks. I'm going to throw out the ideas. Not sure what these of these were doing just yet, but. One was that we hand out masks to everybody driving in. Um, I said, we certainly could do that, but just think that the line could back all the way up to Whitfield Street because you got to pull them out of a box and you've got two, three, how many people in the car, you hand them out and you shouldn't be touching them. You have to use a grabber to hand them um, or you have to bag them in advance. You know, somehow, you, you know, when we handed the masks out at the high school for everybody, the masks weren't touched by, you know, oh, they're put in bags, you know, so they were handed out uh, in bags. It could be time consuming. Another thought is maybe we have them right up front where the band is. And we announce if you don't have a mask, you got to come up and get one. And now we, we're not touching them. We just have them in a box. People grab them. By the way, the band this time is Take Two and Call Me in the Morning, Rob Milfel, the, the all the doctors. I think they'll be really good about announcing over and over and over again. And that's people one are, of the things we did talk about. I think yeah. that's the important one. They've got to announce over a, at least a couple of times. This band didn't do it quite as often, and they probably didn't think of it, but. No, no, it, 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 it should have been done. Um, yeah. The other thing is, uh, I came up with an idea, we, we can create grids on the, on the sand. And um, I talked to Tony about this, I ran it by Dennis Johnson, he liked the idea. We can use stakes, stake out the perimeter, okay, with, I don't know, 40 stakes, I don't know, a whole bunch of stakes, and then we'll run caution tape at, at sand level, not like at the top of the stakes, people have to like crawl under them. But we'll make lines with caution tape or rope or something. We can make grids six feet by six feet, eight feet by eight feet, whatever we want to make them, and tell you know people will have to sit in their grid with their family. If they're not in their family or live in the same house, they have to go to a different grid. They can be right next to them if they want to, but not in the same square. So we'll, that's the same thing we'll do on the green. It's going to be a lot of work, um, but I'd have Tony paint grids on the green. If we find this works on the beach, we'll do that on the green for those concerts and just tell people. You got to sit in your square. If you don't, you're gonna you're gonna blow it and ruin the whole thing. 
the bottom line is Matt said that if if people don't behave appropriately at this concert, he's going to tell us we can't have any more. That's going to cancel for the rest of the summer. So we're trying to uh, make it work. Um, I think people want the concerts. Uh, I think we can do it pretty safely, and uh, we'll try it. Okay. Lawrence, did you? I, yeah, I, um, so, I yeah, my opinion is, I mean, it, it's not our job to hand out masks. And if you start handing out masks, I mean, you're going to have to, how many people are you going to you're gonna need down there to hand out masks? That's not our job to hand out masks. And you guys were at the concert, and you're telling me that, you know, I don't tell me if I'm wrong, like 90% of the people were doing what they were supposed to be doing, and there's only 10%, and now we're going to jump through hoops and do all this work when it's really not necessary. I mean, couldn't we just, I mean, you don't have to wear a mask. You only have to, right? It's, you're not required to wear a mask unless you're six feet right. within somebody. So I, I read all these emails that say people have to wear a mask. Now, you don't have to wear a mask unless you're within six feet of somebody, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So my thing is I, I, I can't see doing all this work when it, everything pretty much worked fine last time. You know, this is the first concert we've had. So we got to work out some of the glitches, but to do all this work with the stakes, the tape, I mean, we jump through hoops are really, to me, it's unnecessary. I mean, couldn't we, like you say, have the band make an announcement? I mean, can the health director go down there and just take a look? And if he doesn't like it, announce to the band, hey, look, it. if you don't, you'll have the band make an announcement. They look at you don't, you know, smarten up. The health director is going to shut us down and we all go home. I mean, I just can't see doing all this work. For, you know, really, Larry. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's necessary. I, I, I kind of agree with you because we, we sat on the grass off to the side and when we looked down the beach, when we looked behind us, e almost everybody was with their family group, distance from everybody else, didn't have masks on because we were six feet away from everybody. And yeah, I mean, when I, when I put that So I agree with you on that. And I think our mistake was that we did not say anything to the group that was in front. And perhaps that's where our mistake was. Perhaps we should have gone right to them and said, listen, guys, you know what? You're a big group. You've got to separate yourselves. Yeah, Rick, I mean, can, can, can they... Can, can but they were a family. Yeah, you didn't, like, you needed a so-called expert down there to say, hey, look at the health director saying, hey, look at, hey, man, you got to make an announcement or I'm going to shut the place down. Like, you know, like the fire department, you know, they have a fire marshal go to an event that's in the gym or whatever. And if he doesn't like what he sees... We'll shut the whole thing down. Everybody goes home. I mean, uh, it just seems crazy to go. You know, the, the, advantage, the advantage that we will have at this concert, though, is that we will have doctors there who can probably say, hey, listen, guys, if you don't social distance yourself, we're going home. Yeah, that's what I think. To, to, me, to me, I know what I'm thinking is half the band members, they're in the medical field. And, hey, look, at guys, you need to do this, you know, um, you need to make an announcement in the beginning, and if they see any problems, to make another announcement. And if I mean, right? I mean, I don't know. They set up stakes and grids and all that kind of stuff for for what? I don't. You I know? think it was talk to people. And again, you know, I know these. I, a lot of people or a few people that are in. You know, they saw the pictures. They saw the comments. But the pictures, you know, where you took the picture from. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I took a picture from where I was, it was fine. Yeah, I mean, and some of the people, I mean, I saw some of the letters. There was people writing emails. They weren't even there. And they're right. writing about well, what I saw on uh, the social media. And um, I don't know. You guys were there. I mean, what do you think? You guys were there. What I was going to say is, um, you're right, pictures can be taken from any angle, so the pictures do not mm -hmm. always tell, like, real reality is going on, but Rick did say this was before it was posted on Facebook, or we got any of these letters, that he contacted Matt that night, like, so he did see some issues, so we do need to address something, yes. you right. know, right? I think that's, unless I'm mis speaking, Rick, I mean, I think you did see some things that you thought, okay, there are some that's things to be one group in front, absolutely. Yeah. And, and so... I, I think that um, yeah, we we don't we can't we, we cannot jump through all these hoops and go crazy, but we have to balance it. And I think that is reminders, but just kind of making it. Uh, I don't I don't know how to implement this, but like you can say reminders, but there can be. I mean, it's 
I'm trying to think of the right word, but something like friendly reminders, like whether it's signage or fun things. Like, I mean, it's the thing we're all supposed to be doing for each other. So if there's some, you know, creative way to make it, like I I said this to Rose and I don't know if this makes sense, but you know, I was talking to my husband about this and he was talking about how Yankee stadium, they started having, instead of just security, they had these, can I help you people? And I'm not suggesting we have all these help you people, but it turned something which was really crowd control into something friendly and approachable. Mm -hmm. And so kind of thinking about that, we're not going to have all these people kind of policing, you know, their neighbors, but just, you know, more reminders than just the band saying, well, you guys are too close to each other, separate, just, you know, I don't know. So that does probably take some marking, but I think we can do it in a friendly, approachable yes. kind of way because we all know we're supposed to be wearing masks or staying away from each other. And it's just part of life for, you know, the foreseeable, you know, for a while. And I, I, I don't know, I don't have it fully formed, but I think we need to address it in more than just the band, relying on the band mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I mean, when, Rick, when you promote this, I mean, when this goes out, from, you're promoting it. You obviously, you know, front and center, you put in there that, you know, you got to be six feet apart. If you're not, you got to wear a mask and all that kind of stuff. You know, put a sign on the stage, have them make an announcement. I mean, I mean, if you put all these grids up there, who the, who the, who's to say they're going to obey them anyway? I mean, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, well it's, it's true. But it, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make sure we flood social media. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll get a newspaper article and we'll, I mean, we'll do stuff to make sure that we get the word out ahead of time that this is our expectation. But I'm also, I want people to know that if they blow it on that night, that's the end of our concerts. And that's what Matt has said. And um, that's why I was willing to, and I told Tony I'd help him um, put the stakes out and the tape or whatever. I want to, I want to do everything we can to make sure people are, are if they're not going to do it on their own, we got to do something to make them do it. The grits. It's the same thing we did for the high school graduation. Tony made 300 parking spaces uh, at the fairgrounds for the board of ed for the graduation. They were all spread out, separated. That didn't yeah. work. My understanding is that didn't work real well. Well, people weren't staying in it, right? Well, that's, that's, why, that's, that's what I think. Point. We could make all those grids, but I, I think back to this group of 30 that was there, and what are they going to do? They're going to get four grids all together and schlop all together. So whether it's well, a grid or not, if the point is, how do we get those 30 some odd friends and family that like to be together to spread out so that they're not a huge group and everybody misunderstands what that is? I mean, the only benefit to the grid is that you can control people during the day at the beach, but you're going to have to have those set up. And to say that 175 people are going to be at the beach that day just for a gorgeous day beforehand aren't going to mess up those grids and rip down those caution tapes and then you're going to have to like there's not going to be time to to go back and set it up i do like the idea of the grid because i suggested that when this first started and we were opening the beach only because people do need visual reminders that this is what six feet looks like yeah. i always tell my kids it's me laying down and i mean they need visuals but it's a lot of work and how are we going to keep it up all day long when it's a beach day for the concert at night, and you can't kick everyone gonna, off. Yeah, who's going to be monitor? Who's going to be down there monitoring monitoring these grids? I mean, like, right. if that people I on the like shoulder, hey, you got to get to the next grid. I mean, <laughs> I just say, you know, people people need to act like adults. And last time, ninety percent of people acted like adults. And at this time, if they're not going to act like adults, and that's it, then we don't have them anymore. I do think having something like Tara said, like even if it's just a couple of the gate guards or. Um, counselors or whatever wearing their staff shirts walking around that night just you know not policing people but they're there so people see them so it's kind of like oh you know they're watching reminder. us this time it is a visual yeah, reminder I'm like, yeah. Yeah. A little I, agree that, I agree that people you cannot i can walk around with a six foot stick <laughs> like a noodle like a six foot noodle yeah. I mean, like, and I mean, that's what I mean. It's like, you can even have some fun with it. Like you can have a sense of humor, even though none of it's really funny. You know, at the beach, you have a noodle that's six feet or whatever. This is how far it is. And you don't have to be pleasing. I don't know, just some, or that doesn't have to be walk around with it, but like a visual, like make a fun sign or something. Cause I, whether or not people, people do not follow rules or do, we cannot police them. But I think we have to make a good faith effort to mm -hmm. encourage people to do the right thing. Yeah. And, and we can't just say, well, if they don't, then we'll just can it because that ruins it for people who do follow the rules. Right. So, so Rick, who's also who's, who's left to remember the old vaudeville where they would take the sign and they'd walk it across the stage in between acts? Yeah. Not a bad idea. 
I mean, it's sort of funny, it's sort of silly, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. Every two songs or sometimes somebody walk across with a little reminder sign and make it fun. Get two cardboard cutouts, Bingo. one of Rick yeah. and one of um, yeah. Matt, and yeah. put a pool noodle between them. So, so believe it. That's something want to fun. Out. I don't know. Like we can brainstorm about it, but something yeah. fun to get the point across. I don't no, want to have yeah. to do the extra work with the grids, but I only suggested to show our effort that we're doing everything we can right. as a town yes, to right. make this as safe right. as we can make it. Yeah. Because I think that's you know, really we did important. Take a little, little hit in the, in the you know social media on this, right. and, uh, uh, even though they weren't all that accurate, but still people fed into it and. But, um, I think but we I want also, to know what we're trying to do to make make it as safe for people. Yeah, I, but, I also it. think there's part of this where it, this is just highlighting where people are coming at this from all directions. There are regulations coming from the governor, the state, but people are at different comfort levels and are reacting differently. So we can mm -hmm. be looking at the same picture and some people, I mean, some of us, some of them, at least on the Facebook photos, but some people, like, I did get a, you know, it was, well, uh, two people in here, I mean, it's not that many letters that we got, but, you know, some people were actually there, and, but I, I think it's just highlighting that everyone's at a different place, so you're not, we're not gonna be able to please everybody, but we need to, you know, make an effort to get people to follow the rules. Right. You know, and, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't recommend staff members getting involved. <laughs> going down there and uh, separating people. Hey, you can't do this. That's just going to cause that's too many problems. Plus, you'd have to train these people. You just can't send them out there. You have to train them on what they do, what the rules and the regulars are, regulations are. You just can't, you know, take the regular beach people and, and start sending them out to the crowd. That's that's not good. And my recommendation is, I think personally, like you said, have someone walk across the stage, whatever. But me, whatever Rick feels comfortable with, you know, what, what you think, what you recommend, let's go with it. Whatever, whatever you think makes you feel comfortable, you know, you do what you got to do. Well, and I, I wasn't like, suggesting that people, answers. yeah, I wasn't suggesting we had staff that actually policed it and got involved there's someone was there, but I just meant like the presence of people who all have parks and rec on. It's just, you know, right. it's like the presence of your chaperones or what it's like, it's like, yeah. you know, kids chaperones are there like, oh, I better not do that because they're watching me instead of just, you know, you get carried away when you think mm. no one's watching you, you know, and, and they, they don't have to get involved in any way, but can just like, you know, flag the, you know, they, well. like, oh, this is not so good. And they could tell whoever would be appropriate. Yeah. So you, you, you gave me all some like really good ideas. So what happened last time? Ellen, Connor, and Taryn were all helping with the parking. Right. I think maybe we use the more of the gate guards staff to do that. Have yeah. at least one or two of them with me at the beach as people start to set their chairs down. Hey, listen, just remind you, if you're not in the same family, separate it. But then again, you know, people are going to be with their friends. You know, mm -hmm. no way we can check and find. We're not going to look at IDs. They will no. really live in the same house. You know, I mean, there's got to also be some individual responsibility here, too. Yes. You know, we can't govern everything. And, but we, but we want to do the best we can because um, I, I really want to continue the conscious. I don't want this to be the last one. When is the next one, Rick? Uh, July 23rd. 23rd or something? No, and then the 24th is um, the driving movie. And then the 26th is the first concert under green. <laughs> we got three things in a row. Okay. All right, so we have some good ideas. If you have any other suggestions, call Rick. And I'll talk to Dennis. You know, Dennis, I'll, 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 you know, he did like the grid idea, but I'll, you know, it's a lot of work. And um, um, you know, I was talking to, I was talking to Allison in Greenwich, and apparently they have huge hoops that they are able to put down at the beach and separate people. So I, there's things out there we could talk about it and, yeah. and see. Um, but the beach is easy. The in the green will be harder because that, you know, they can come from all different directions, and it's. Much bigger. It's much. I mean, it would be much harder to manage it on the green. Yeah. Oh, the green is going to be a different ball game. Right. Yeah. That I one, agree. I think you know, we may, we may have to do something with grids, but once they're there, yeah. they'll be you know. Tony. Yeah. Once we put the once we around. put the white down, it'll yeah, stay that's there. Easier, though. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Moving on to our need of bus drivers. Are we well, in thank need? Thank you all for drivers? that conversation. Um, just, just to kind of give you an update, uh, Ter Terry's getting a little nervous. Um, yeah. We, we had nine drivers as of right now working. We have one. Ooh. Uh, most of them did not want to work during the COVID crisis because they, you know, they're all older. They're just worried about it. Well. Uh, 
and I mean, the, the good thing is that really the only driving we're doing right now is for medical. You know, we're not right. doing shopping or errands or to the community center trips or anything. Um, although with our, our camp being at uh, the high school, twice a week they're being bused somewhere else with our drivers, like to the beach. Or last okay. week we're up at Bidner Park. Um, so we have, we have two really who are willing to work right now. One of them just went on vacation to South Dakota, Chuck, for two weeks. And so uh, we have uh, Dawn. Um, so right now she's our only driver. Um, one of them is uh, battling cancer. We don't, and he's older. We don't think he's going to come back. Uh, another one has kind of indicated he probably won't come back because he gets paid about $6 an hour more in Madison. And he, and he works there too. Um, and, um, you know, there are a couple others that not even returning Terry's phone calls. So we think that, uh, oh, another one moved to Florida. So, we're clearly down two anyway of the nine. Uh, even if the rest of them come back, one of them is a school bus driver. She's getting paid unemployment to stay home, so she doesn't want to drive during the summer. Um, so we have one right now. When Chuck comes back, it'll be two. Uh, but we normally have two every day. Um, some days three, some days four if we got a trip. So we're. I, I just want to. We're not panicking yet, but Terry's starting to get there a little bit, getting concerned about it. Uh, what do we do? I mean, if we don't have drivers, we don't have a transportation program. And that's a big Rick, part of what we do. What, um, is there a special license class that you need to have to drive those um, ones? Yeah, it's, um, it's a CDL, but not the one where, you know, you have to, like a big school bus type CDL. You're right. Um, and they have to have a passenger endorsement, which is easy to get, <clears throat> that part. The drive, the CDL is a little harder. You got to... Um, take the bus, you know, obviously practice with it some and then go through a test, you know, backing mm -hmm. up and, you know, take, take the, whoever's testing for a drive. And there's like, I don't know, 10 or 15 things that they check off. If you miss one, they stop it right there. I mean, it's like, you've got to get a hundred percent. If you miss one thing, you can't even go to the next thing. They won't even take it, let, let you go any farther than that. So um, it's a bit, bit of a challenge. We had one driver, Took him three times to get to, to finally pass the test. We stayed with him. He stayed with it, and he finally got it. But um, you know, it's not not real easy to to, to get it. Um, so, unless there are a bunch of school drivers that are retiring, uh, we're gonna have trouble. Uh, we may have trouble when we get into the fall. Um, although John John asked me, he was thinking of retiring. He said, "Hey, what would I do to be a bus driver?" Kelsey, I said, "Well, go get a license. <laughs> we can use you." <laughs> So just a heads up at this point, we're not panicking yet. Um, you know, I'll try talking to some, a couple of other drivers too and, you know, see if I can convince them to come back. Yeah, I know we don't put out a senior newsletter like for the summer, but it's a way we could just get the word out to seniors too, who might know somebody recently retired or, yeah. you know, just to sort of get the word out that we're going to start. <laughs> I will love. Uh, Two of the drivers uh, served as our park monitors, um, Howard and, and Chuck. Uh, mm -hmm. Howard, again, was not willing to drive passengers, but he didn't mind driving a town car to go, you know, monitor the parks right. and make sure that people are social. You know, that's when the number was a maximum of five in a group. You know, right. we had to go to kick, kick kids off fields and dog park and everything else. And uh, he was willing to do that. So, um, um, you know, again, these guys are all – no. I think all of them are 70 or older. Yeah, and, no. you know, they're a little concerned about driving right now. Yeah, no, I understand that. We all are. Yeah. Okay, and what's happening with the sports groups? Reopening? Yeah, a, lot, a lot of this was really for John's benefit because he had some questions last meeting about how come all the towns are ready to go. And I said, well, no one's ready to go until the state says you can go anyway. So we have, um, there was a 17 page document. Uh, that came out and I went through it and um, I highlighted certain areas that, that were applicable to the sports groups. Some of it had to do with like swimming pools and fitness centers that had nothing to do with, with sports, but uh, there's a lot in there. And um, uh, part of it is that each sport is responsible to ensure compliance to these, these very detailed uh, requirements from the state. It's not Parks and Rec or the town's responsibility or the health director. As I mentioned earlier, for example, if, um, if they use a Little League dugout and kids sit on the bench, they have to disinfect the bench after every game. 
Um, they have to make sure that kids are not sharing a bat. If they are, they got to wipe it down in between each kid. Um, they have to ensure that when the kids are not on the field, they have to wear masks. Um, they have to ensure that the parents are separated out every six feet. Um, we helped, as I said earlier, Tony painted 216 grids <laughs> at all the fields to, to mark out like where the people could sit. Um, it's very detailed. I don't have, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole detail with you, oh. but they all have that. I highlighted the pages that were most applicable to them. Again, so they don't read about swimming pools and fitness centers. Um, and, um, and then Pam uh, Millman wrote up a, uh, a, a, a waiver form that they have to sign, uh, basically indicated they read the, the document, they understand the document, and they're, they're going to uh, enforce it. So. Um, Rick, with the waiver, um was that for just like the heads of each group to sign off and say we understand and we're passing this information on to our our families or was each player's family supposed to sign that waiver no just the, the organization the head of the organization mm -hmm. and what they do with there is up to them but they they have to acknowledge that they are aware of it They're, they'll abide by it and they'll enforce it so okay. it went out to um, soccer is not doing anything in the summer, but it went out to the men's softball league, um, Guilford Indians baseball, little league, uh, lacrosse. There's a high school lacrosse group that's playing at Guilford High School. Um, it's kind of neat, actually. There's a group called the Vicks Foundation in uh, New Haven. And this, this guy, he actually created the SEC, SCC uh, Girls um, Lacrosse League. So all the, whatever our high school girls league they were playing in, games they would have had in the spring, they're, they're actually having those games now in the summer against all the opponents they would have played in the spring. It's not part of the high school. It's part of the separate foundation. Um, but it's 100% it's the high school, Guilford High School girls team from the Guilford Seahawks, I think is their name. And uh, their first game actually is probably just ending. It was tonight on the uh, stadium field. But, but anyway, he had to get the form. He had to sign it confirmed that he was going to abide by it with this team. Um, so it's pretty, pretty detailed and um, it kind of about, it evolves almost every week or something new, <laughs> you know, those mm -hmm. guidelines. But we're abiding by it and uh, they all have to, they, they know what they are. Okay. Um, any word on when the lakes might open? <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> still, no, no. You know, Ellen checked with the state last week. They still have not opening their inland lakes. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I guess, I guess when it's going to open up is when they re eliminate that 15 foot distance you have to have between blankets. Because again, the corner fog is so small, we couldn't get very many in there. And then how do you, how do you enforce six feet apart in the water? A quarter, I mean, a Jacobs is not so bad as you all know, not, you know, it's not a real swimming place. It's a much bigger area. Um, but on the lake, I mean, how do you do that? Ellen and I talked today, we're, we're we're still holding out a little bit to see if we can try to run swim lessons. Um, July 20th, I think, is uh, when they mm -hmm. would start. But then again, I said to her, well, you've got to look into this because swim instructors with the little kids, they're holding on to them. Can they do that? Because they're not six feet away. They have to hold those little kids and kickboards and everything else. They're blowing bubbles and coughing and things. And um, so, um, you know, I, I, we're finding out that so far that the state has, has not opened up any of their inland lakes and we're okay. sort of using the same guidance right now. Fair enough. And Rick, is I the noticed. state not opening up the, the inland lakes because of the size and the controlling of number of people or is it different for each lake? Because I mean, not all inland lakes are as small as um, Lake Quinnipiac, like beach area. I think it's, the, it's, it's that. I think it's the swim areas are small as opposed to the ocean. You know, swim areas are small and the beaches are, you know, generally much smaller than the shoreline beaches. But I think that, that, those are all the reasons. Okay. And, you know, I mean, we've talked about some ideas. Uh, can you reserve times? And the problem, you all know, the corner pod, uh, Claire, especially because <laughs> you're up there a lot. But once you open that gate, it's a floodgate. How are you going to yep. keep people out that didn't reserve time or whatever? Um, they're already sneaking in and around the gate when we're not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yep. You know, around, how do you keep them out? That's it, it, it's a real battle. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a uh, it's tough. I don't, I don't, I would not want to put our gate guards in that kind of situation right, right now. No. 
So a lot of it's for their safety too, I think. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all know it's not just a handful of residents that go there, it's people come from all over and um, it, it's hard to manage it. Um, so we, we clearly haven't said we're not closed for the whole summer. In fact, one of the things I said to Alan today is let's hire a couple of the, uh, have a couple of the lifeguards go up there with a kayak. I don't even know what the weeds are like. Go up there, either go in and swim or go back and forth over the swim area with a kayak. Let me know what the weeds are like. If we get to the, because remember, we couldn't put those yeah, benthic blankets in because our guys couldn't yeah. social distance to put, you know, they have to be this close together to put them in. Um, that um, Greg Bugby, who's always been real great before he even had these things, he would go with his underwater weed whacker and, you know, mow them down, basically. He's willing to do that. Um, so I said, well, let's, let's get our people up there. Let's see how bad it is. And if we start thinking we might open, we'll get Greg up there and knock the weeds down. But we're not there yet. It's just, uh, believe me, it's really frustrating. The number of calls we're getting, people, emails and phone calls, when are you going to open? And we I don't have an issue. Was Inland Lakes part of um, stage three or possibly part of the stage three opening since that was pushed back again? I just heard that today. I, I don't know. I haven't heard when that's going to be. I'm so confused know. on what stage we're in and what covers what stage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, again, it's a lot, of, a lot of mixed messages. I, I heard the tail end of, of a news thing when I was in uh, my vehicle today on the radio with um, Governor Lamont said he walked a lot of the parks and beaches over the weekend. He said he was really impressed on how people were social distancing. And again, I only heard the tail end of it. But it, what I did hear was that something to the fact that you might be more relaxing of what goes on outdoors, yeah. open things up more, but not indoors yet. So I guess, again, this changes every week. Yeah. <laughs> we have I to think wait stage through. three was like um, amusement parks were gonna start to open, theaters, Parks are open. Yeah, are they open. Now? Yeah, that was part of two, I think. Oh, was yeah. it? I'm, I'm, I'm so bad. confused. I right. think well, it's it's totally confusing. outdoor gathering, unlimited people, like a concert, you could have unlimited. Right now, the limit is 500, mm -hmm. which would be a problem for us on the green, not at the beach. Um, you know, we, we get 1,000 on the green, and if, if the limit is 500, then we probably can't do the concerts on the green. But is it... 500 if like if you place the band a certain way and gridded the whole entire green with the you know six feet between each box and whatever is it still 500 as long as you you're con trying to control or what are you like, saying is it 500 people or 500 units like would Dennis and I together in one grid be considered one I think, I think people I think it's 500 people yeah now, but again, what I had heard in phase three, that was going to go to unlimited, but I, I, something changed today. I don't know if that's changed or not. Huh. Yeah, because I, I mean, I don't, I mean, either circumstances, the beach or the green, I mean, there's a, a number and yes, 500, we can control the beach, but not really because we're allowing people to walk in. So, I mean, people can walk in and out, they can kayak in. So, I mean, either way, having a limit is daunting. To make sure that we are, you know, doing the work to keep everyone safe, so we don't get the backlash. But yeah. again, the beach, the beach have been pretty good. Cause if you go down and you see, even if it's 150 people, you can see a lot of gaps. You know, yeah. big open spaces. Yeah. People have been really good about separating out. Um, again, when I was here on Saturday, I saw, might have seen five or six people in a group. Did, did I know if they all lived in the same house? Probably they don't. I don't know that. You know, we, we don't go to every group and say. Can you show proof that you live in the same house? I mean, where, where, do, you, where do you have to, again, it's part of an individual responsibility, but whatever, the groups, families, whatever, they were very well separated. And there were a lot of big open spaces, I'd say 30, 40, 50 feet separation in some cases. So there was clearly was more people we could have fit down there. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? So it's 15 feet on the beach, but if you go to watch your son's Little League game, you only have to be six feet away from the next person. So again, right. it's a lot of, Sort of contradictory. Contradiction. Yeah. Big time. But no, but, but the 15 foot thing, I think, is blankets have to be that far apart. So, so it's because it allows for people to walk in the middle. It's like yeah. six feet on both sides. You know what I mean? Like if a person's walking in between your blanket, they will not be six feet away from you unless the blankets are 15 feet apart. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, it makes sense. Like six feet on either side with a three foot row. Yeah. But Walkway. Again, you know, outdoors is fresh air and the air is moving around. And, you know, I see how I understand the restriction inside, you know, um, but you're at the beach and the wind's blowing and, you know, no one's breathing anybody else's breath. It's, it's going up somewhere. But that's what I think the point he was making from walking around. Again, I always heard the tail end of it. The tail end of it that, uh, outdoor is different, you know, and there's, there's fresh air and it's just a whole different thing. And I think, I think what I heard, you might be a little bit more relaxing on the outdoor stuff, not yet on indoors. Makes sense. All right. Any other business? Anything? Anybody? Oh, you know, I forgot, on Ellen's report, I forgot to mention, on her report, there was um, Vermont Systems Rec Track. We're, we're in about a 10-year-old program, so uh, we're looking to upgrade that. Um, I don't think it's coming out of any of our money. I think it's money in IT budget. It's about $6,000 for the new program. And then if we do full-fledged training, it's another six. Um, so maximum of 12. But in speaking with uh, Mary Jane, um, I think there's money to cover it somewhere else, um, but we are uh, we are several versions uh, old right now, so oh. it's going to be a whole new look. It's going to take a lot of training for everybody to get to the new one. Um, but Ellen is going to coordinate that. She's going to start working on that in about two weeks. Makes sense to do it. I mean, everything is electronic these days, so we need to have the best yes. and most updated system, or it's kind of pointless to have it. You're right. Um. Rick, um, uh, the uh, applications for your for the um, Nancy shop are they in? Are they done? Or they came in actually. That's after this meeting. I'm going to look at them. <laughs> yeah, okay. that, I just got them this afternoon around four o'clock. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many. I think there's maybe eight or ten. Oh wow! That's not bad. All right. Good. Yeah. Um, Nancy, Nancy was great. She but she went to work part time at the uh, tax office. Yeah. Um, she always wanted to work part-time. That was her original intent. She was part-time receptionist. When Bonnie left, we kind of talked her into applying for the uh, admin assistant job, did a tremendous job with it, really brought up the level of um, computer skills and you know administrative expertise there. And um, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I, I know Jen also applied for it. She just started today, <laughs> full-time receptionist. Uh, she put an application in, but you know, we'll look and see what, what we got. I have no idea. I just, I just picked okay. up the packet today. I haven't even seen them yet. Okay. All right. Well, just keep me in the loop. Oh, but by the way, Nancy, though, um, because she's part-time at the tax office, she is going to come back a few times a week to help us during this intro until we get somebody. So oh, we'll have that connection still. Well, that's nice of her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else, guys? Nope. All right. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 8.05. Second. Second. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you guys very Bye. much. Thank you, Pete. Stay safe. You, you too. Bye. I will Good talk night. to you.